Have you ever watched two children bicker and then one of them uses the line, I know you are, but what am I? That's what I'm forced to think of whenever I hear someone use the intolerant of intolerance argument, a bickering child. If you haven't heard someone use the line yet, you've probably been wisely avoiding debate or conversation with extreme conservatives about the LGBT community. It goes something like this. Once someone identifies that a belief or a behavior is, in addition to being bigoted, also leading to policy that is socially unjust and limits the rights and freedoms of others, that line gets brought up. It's supposed to be a showstopper. Because side A of the community is intolerant of homosexuals and seeks to limit their rights and freedoms, and side B is intolerant of side A's position and thus seeks to preserve and protect legal rights and freedoms, side B is intolerant of intolerance and therefore just as guilty of bigotry as side A is. Holy moly. All right, let's get a few things straight. It's not absolutely necessary to discuss this first point to explain why the intolerant of intolerance argument is full of baloney, but I think it's important, so I'm going to hit it in it. Bigotry is defined on Wikipedia as a state of mind where a person obstinately, irrationally, unfairly, or intolerantly dislikes other people, ideas, etc. They go on to list examples of bigotry target groups distinguished by such things as race, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, and more. What this means is if you dislike someone irrationally or unfairly and without any reason other than because they belong to one of those groups, you are a bigot. Now if I or someone else identifies you as a bigot based on opinions that you voice and positions that you take that fit the definition of a bigot, that does not also make me a bigot. The I know you are but what am I tactic has no power here. Next and much more importantly is intolerant. Now, in this context, intolerant has two possible definitions, as defined by Merriam-Webster. Definition A, executed by group A, in the example I gave earlier, is unwilling to grant or share social, political, or professional rights. See bigoted. They actually reference bigotry in the definition. Definition B, executed by group B in my earlier example, is unwilling to grant equal freedom of expression, especially in religious matters. So to be clear, when we suggest that a group of people, homosexuals for example, not be allowed to have the same rights and privileges as another group simply because they are a member of that group, that's intolerance type A, and also bigotry. To not permit religious or personal convictions to influence public policy in a way that stifles or limits the rights and freedoms of individuals, that's actually not intolerance in either form. Though I think an argument could be made that some people, while arguing in opposition to actions like that, might be belittling the positions of the type A group, and that could fall into the category of type B. But they are not the same definition of intolerance. Group B's objective is to maintain and defend and preserve the rights and privileges of a group of people. That's the exact opposite of an intolerant or bigoted action. It all comes down to this one simple question. Is your intent to limit the rights and freedoms and privileges of an individual in a group because they are a member of that group and for no other reason? If you answered yes, that's bigotry and intolerance. Is your position to defend and protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms of a group of individuals? If you answered yes to the second question, that's not bigotry or intolerance. Children, stop playing the neener neener game. This argument doesn't work.